Good evening. I'm Mayor Ron Nuremberg. I'm joined by Judge Nelson Wolf. Uh, also tonight, we have Dr. Junda Wu, our medical director for San Antonio Metro Health. And we have Robert Puente, president and CEO of the San Antonio Water System. It's been a few days since we've been able to safely bring you this update due to the weather uh, we too have been experiencing. Uh, tonight's briefing is a COVID-19 update and a severe winter weather response update. So let me start with the uh, weather response. The region is still going through a significant weather event. Let's go through some of the updates from the city, then I'll turn it over to Judge Wolf. Road conditions remain icy and very dangerous. The main lanes of 281 North, Loop 410 Northwest, and Highway 151 are closed. Several highway direct connectors are closed as well. Approximately 40 city streets are closed, 60 traffic signals are out, and 18 are flashing. Public works crews have sprayed sand on 79 bridges to allow them to remain open, so you should avoid travel unless it's absolutely necessary because the weather is calling for a very hard freeze tonight. On to food delivery for some of our uh, more vulnerable residents. The San Antonio Police Department is working with the San Antonio Food Bank to deliver food to the elderly, disabled, and vulnerable residents who lack transportation options to leave their homes. Please call 311 to request assistance if it's needed. Road closures and weather conditions may affect delivery times. Just please note that. Now, on to some permitting issues for repairs that I know many folks are worried about, along with some warnings on scams that are already occurring in our community. As you begin to recover from this weather event, a few reminders. Property owners or licensed plumbers do not require a permit for minor emergency repairs on freeze, freeze damaged or leaking water pipes, provided that the new piping doesn't exceed five feet in length. A plumbing permit is required if multiple water pipes are broken, generally affecting the entire home plumbing system and plumbing fixtures. Additionally, permits are required for any repairs to gas lines or gas systems. Our permitting is in place to prevent any damage uh, to you or, or damage to the health and safety of those around you. Where permits are required, the emergency repairs can be completed before the permit is obtained. We're trying to make it as easy and as efficient as possible for us to get these repairs underway. The permit shall be submitted to the Development Services Department on the next business day once all emergency repairs are completed by a licensed plumbing contractor. Please beware of fraudulent, unqualified contractors or those that come from all over the country looking for vulnerable customers. To check if a contractor is registered with the city, please visit sanantonio.gov slash DSD. And you can also visit the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners. Finally, homeowners should visit their insurance policies for coverage for the cost of repairing pipes. Some policies also reimburse for the cost of spoiled food. And as noted earlier today, uh, during our city council meeting, we will be looking at avenues for providing relief for these repairs as uh, they are gonna be uh, very much needed in days to come. Let me turn it over now to Judge Wolf. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Uh, just a, uh, one thing on uh, COVID, as you know, we're in the middle of a emergency weather conditions. At the same time, we still are fighting the COVID uh, issue that's been plaguing us for the last year. Uh, we did do vaccines on Tuesday and Wednesday. We were not able to do them today or tomorrow, but we're going to come back and work on Saturday. So Saturday, we will be open at the Wonderland Mall. Those that have been scheduled and were not able to come, uh, will be able to come on Saturday and get their vaccines. Uh, we are all working very hard to try to address this issue. Uh, we have closed 249 uh, roads and bridges out in the county. Uh, we've also assisted TxDOT in a number of closures that they've had to do on the state highway system. We've been de-icing bridge, bridges. We've uh, spread something like 151 tons of ched rock uh, to stop the skidding. Uh, we're working with our uh, emergency service districts to providing, uh, providing services in those areas. Uh, we have booked hotel rooms. We have a warming center at our emergency center. Uh, we are now sticking to only having essentials workers come to uh, the county 
And we've done that over the last several days, and we will do that again tomorrow. The sheriff is out on patrol with all of his people, turning in those dangerous situations, places we should close or we should respond to. Uh, so we're trying to do everything we can. The shortage we've got is uh, portable water, and uh, we're asking uh, for help from the federal government and from others to get more water in here and from the private sector. That's where we stand now. We did pass, I want to mention, a gouging emergency order that we issued last night. and. Uh, they can, any complaints can be turned into our sheriff's department, or I would assume into the police department, or to the attorney general's office. If you see someone or someplace taking advantage of this uh, terrible thing that we're facing with respect to the severe water, uh, weather we're having. Uh, so that's it, Mayor. Thank you very much, Judge. And, and also to encourage those repairs to happen, I, I didn't mention, but permits that are required for repairs are free from development services. Uh, so we wanna get those underway as effectively as possible. Um, okay, so let me give you an update on CPS Energy that was relayed to me uh, before I turn it over to uh, Robert Puente. Um, while power is not completely restored across San Antonio and Texas, CPS Energy system has seen significant improvement throughout the day and the need for statewide outages has been suspended by grid operator or ERCOT. More than 6,000 customers just about remain without power currently, which is primarily related to damaged equipment. CPS crews, as you know, are in the field and they're continuing to work hard to restore electricity to all customers. Since the cold and wet weather continues, however, all CPS customers, CPS energy users are urged to conserve energy to keep the system stable by lowering thermostats to 68 degrees, unplugging all lights and appliances, and closing shades and blinds to reduce heat loss. Again, I can't say this more emphatically enough. The next uh, many hours, the next day or so, are gonna be critically important for us to gain stability in the statewide grid. So please conserve energy as best you can uh, and help us uh, all get everybody back up and running. Um, let me uh, now turn it over to Robert Puente with SAWS before I close out with some more on our COVID response. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, I really want to let the community know that uh, I understand what you're going through. I, I feel what you're going through. There's countless phone calls and emails that are coming in, uh, desperate individuals, desperate families that do not have water. And we know how important water is. Uh, the sanitation issue, the uh, just the regular use of water. So we, we hear that. There are certain neighborhoods that are still impacted throughout San Antonio. Uh, the main reason for that is the lack of pressure. Uh, when we had the brief uh, respite uh, a, a day ago uh, where temperatures rose above freezing and things started to, to thaw, we had uh, an idea of what kind of um, main breaks, not, excuse me, not main breaks, but breaks from private businesses and private homes uh, causing uh, the lowering of the water pressure. And also that caused the need for a, a, a boy water notice. So I, I wanna emphasize that we understand if we're not uh, communicating with you enough, it's because we're working as hard as we can to try to actually deliver the water to you. I am way behind answering texts and phone calls and emails, but we are, we are trying as best we can. So these neighborhoods that don't have water, uh, we are in the process of creating some distribution centers where we will be able to distri distribute water to people that come to these centers. In conjunction with the city of San Antonio, we are distributing also bottled water uh, to have that available to the individuals that need that kind of help. There's also been a lot of questions about um, the undue circumstances that we all find ourselves in. Do we have to pay for this water? No, you don't. What the program that we, were gonna, we are going to put in place is whatever your bill was before this happened is we're gonna ask you to pay that bill, no matter how much water you may have lost, what may have happened in your particular circumstance. Uh, and so we don't want you to, to have to add, the, to add the burden onto you to have a huge water bill. So we're, we're doing that. Uh, the message I wanna give out to those people is that uh, we, at SAWS, understand what's going on. The calamity that we not understand right now of, of weather that dips so low and for such an extended period of time, 
the power outages caused our inability to move the water into neighborhoods. And now that the pop that the power is back on, at least we have power. But unfortunately, what's causing uh, is all the leaks that we're finding out throughout the community. We will probably have over 100,000 leaks in people's homes and businesses where water is just uh, coming out. Uh, yesterday, we used more water. We pumped more water than we do on a hot summer day. And that was three different days in a row. And people obviously are not drinking that water. They're not using that water to irrigate their lawns. That's water that is being lost because of these uh, breaks. So what are we doing about that? Uh, we have teams of SAWS volunteers walking neighborhoods, looking to see if there's running, running water, helping people understand how to turn off the water at the meter so you can stop that flow. Uh, we, we are making phone calls. We are asking people to uh, phone your neighbors. I think every, every one of you, every one of you knows someone who had a broken water pipe. And that's throughout the city. So if your name, if you see water coming out of your neighbor's home or in their yard, uh, let them know. Uh, we will do everything we can to help these individuals out, but we have to have these leaks taken care of so our pressure builds up, so we can eventually uh, lift the boil water notice. There is some hope. Uh, the governor has asked uh, all utilities to give us give him an idea and TCEQ an idea of what regulations we're asking to be lifted under this uh, particular calamity. And we've asked for this boil waters to be lifted. There's a lot of uh, talk going on and rightly so, TCEQ has to make a decision uh, and they're doing everything they can, their due diligence to see whether or not we're able to lift it uh, very much ahead of time uh, uh, under the normal regulations. So Mayor, thank you for the opportunity to address, address our public and hopefully uh, there will be some questions that I can help answer. Uh, for the, our customers. Great, uh, thank you, Robert. And before we go to questions, uh, let me close with a, uh, some updates on the COVID situation uh, from Metro Health. Uh, and as a reminder, what the judge mentioned is, is absolutely true. We are still in the midst of a pandemic, uh, but due to the weather, we are not able to bring you case data yet. However, uh, we do have an update from our local hospitals. Please keep in mind that COVID-19 is still in our community. Keep wearing your mask and social distancing, especially if you sought shelter at another person's home. Local hospitals have also been impacted by the weather. So tonight's hospital numbers do, do exclude uh, data from a few hospitals. There are 695 patients in local hospitals, uh, meaning that our downward trend has, been, uh, has continued. There were 69 new admissions within the last 24 hours, which has remained stable over the last few days. 257 patients are in the ICU with COVID-19 and 149 are on ventilators. Regarding vaccines uh, at the Alamo Dome, second dose COVID-19 vaccine appointments will resume at the Alamo Dome tomorrow. The mass vaccination site will resume at 12 noon due to safe weather conditions. For those who have appointments scheduled before 12 tomorrow, they may arrive at the Alamo Dome at any time between 12 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. and you will, get your, uh, you will get your shot. Please take time and be safe. Nobody will be turned away if they arrive later than their scheduled time. As a reminder to the public, you must have a second back dose vaccine appointment scheduled for tomorrow to enter the Alamo Dome. Those with appointments for a different day uh, will not be accepted. Again, we are still within the window of effectiveness for the CDC recommendations on the vaccine protocol. We will also ask for the public to please be patient since we'll be taking all morning appointments in the afternoon. So it will be a little bit more um, hectic in the afternoon tomorrow with regard to second doses. And our staff will ensure that there is a smooth process and everyone will get vaccinated. Uh, so again, uh, we are dealing with a number of different complexities and challenges within our community. I want to thank everyone uh, who has been, um, you know, patient, but also doing their part to protect themselves, their family and their neighbors uh, from all aspects of these challenges, whether they're weather related or uh, they are COVID related. Uh, and please continue to be mindful of COVID-19. Please continue to mask up, practice physical distancing uh, and proper hygiene. And as we get through these next few days together, uh, uh, we will uh, do so as a community, and there will be help for you uh, when you need it. So uh, with that, 
Mr. Puente, myself, the judge, and Dr. Wu available for questions. Our first question tonight is for the mayor and judge. Uh, why is this the first nightly briefing we are having regarding the winter weather? Yeah, well, thank you very much uh, for the question. Um, when the weather started, um, so we were no longer doing the weekend briefings, but when the weather started, we pivoted uh, to our communications going on to social media because of the inaccessibility of the studio uh, to our, our city staff. Uh, people weren't able to get on the roads, uh, so we moved to a, a social media platform. Uh, but now that we are, are back, we plan to do the COVID updates as well as um, uh, updates on the weather for the time that they're they're needed. Yeah, we had a we had, we had a meeting yesterday where we communicated with the media too. Okay. For Mr. Puente, uh, in terms of water outages, some residents may not have water until Sunday or Monday. Can you tell us why? Uh, the main reason why is the lack of pressure to move the water into that particular neighborhood. Uh, yes, the power is back on. Initially, that was what our problem was, was the inability to move water because of no power. Uh, as as you all know, water is very heavy. Uh, even lifting a gallon of, of milk, uh, you can see what kind of weight we're talking about. And so that issue, thankfully, is behind us. Uh, now, there are so many leaks throughout the city that it's hard to get the water to the different points where it's needed. And that's the outlying areas of our city. Um, when we can get a control uh, of this uh, tomorrow, hopefully because of the weather improving and the temperature being above and thawing out and we'll have a very good idea of where these leaks are, what homes are being affected, what businesses are being affected, and hopefully try to uh, isolate, the, isolate those then the pressure will be coming up and we'll be able to move that water further out into the community. So um, please understand that we feel what is going on. We want to help and we're doing everything we can to help uh, every individual out there, every family out there. Can you tell us the latest on a distribution plan to get water to those who don't have it in their homes and have we contracted with anyone to provide the water? Um, the, the city uh, has taken the lead on the bottled water, bottled water uh, distribution. They will have their plan regarding that. We will have a separate plan uh, to distribute water uh, in available containers that you may have at different stations throughout the city. Part of the problem is as of right now, we do not know what the weather's gonna be like tonight uh, and what kind of icy roads we will have early in the morning. So the distribu distribution centers are not uh, definite yet, nor some of the centers are definite, but not the times in which water will be available to the people. Uh, it'll be weather dependent, but we will get the word out as soon as possible as to what time they will be available. But the actual sites are on our website uh, for people to look at and hopefully try to plan to be there once the weather clears and they can drive. Can you tell us how much of the water system is down or has low pressure and discuss the water pressure that exists in the system today? Uh, at different times, uh, the percentages obviously move and it's not the same individuals and families that are being affected, but roughly speaking, about 20% of our system has no water. Another percentage of about 20% has low pressure. That low pressure sometimes changes because we uh, move water around for different uh, areas of town. And that'll come up. It, A lot of different any... stations come online, which helps us uh, bring that up. Excuse me? Is there an yes. estimate on the number of leaks? Uh, it, it, it goes up uh, just every time we have a period of, of normal weather. What's happening is we will actually see that happening sometime in the afternoon, uh, late morning, uh, when the weather uh, is uh, above freezing uh, for an hour or two. Unfortunately, we will start seeing that. People will start seeing that. The thawing will occur and they'll discover uh, that leak. So as I mentioned earlier, we anticipate at least 100,000 uh, leaks out there of businesses and 
and homes. Um, and again, as I said before, for example, I myself have had a leak at, at, at our home, uh, a broken pipe at our home. And so everyone, I think, knows someone that ha that has happened too. And that's our biggest challenge right now is trying to help the individual homeowner to shut their system down so that we don't lose that water and lose that pressure. Do you know how many pump stations are currently out of order? Uh, well, we have not had any pump stations out of order. We have had pump stations that did not have power and therefore did not uh, function. Uh, all power is restored to all the pump stations. So now uh, our pump stations are fully operational. Again, it's the problem of losing water when we distribute the water. Our next question is for Dr. Wu. What efforts will be made to ensure that bad food won't be sold at restaurants once the weather passes? And will there be more pop-up visits and inspections? Yes, we, we will have proactive inspections. And then food establishments all do have a food inspector who's aware of the rules about lack of water and, and they know to dispose of food as needed and we'll respond to complaints as well. Restaurant owners trying to decide when they'll reopen say they're not getting clear direction from city leaders related to the availability of power and water use. What's your response to the criticism of a lack of information needed to make critical decisions? Oh, I'll speak to that because one of the things coming out of the meeting yesterday was a, a clear ownership of the fact that we need to be much clearer and much more consistent with the information uh, getting to the, 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 the public and the community in general uh, uh, for them to make, and make clear decisions. So uh, that's part of the process that we've been engaged in uh, since Monday, uh, and we're going to stick to it. From Telemundo uh, for Mr. Puente, we received a video showing a water line break at Saw's facility. Apparently, it's been leaking since Monday and hasn't been fixed. Are you familiar with this situation? Uh, it was not a line break. It was an eye washing station uh, that was spewing water. It has been fixed. Uh, and frankly, we had a whole lot of other things much more important and fix a water and eye water and eye cleaning station uh, throughout the community. Do you know when you will get the boil notice? Um, repeat that, Bruce. Yeah, can you tell us uh, if, when you anticipate lifting the uh, boil water notice? Uh, under normal circumstances, uh, a series of tests have to show uh, no contamination and uh, proven to TC. TCEQ. But in this circumstance, uh, TCEQ, uh, I just got off the phone with them and we're asking them through the governor to sit to uh, waive certain requirements. Um, they are doing their due diligence on whether or not that is available to us. The unique thing about San Antonio is that we have had a closed system throughout this uh, situation. And by closed system, I mean there were no line breaks on, on Salsa's part. None of our lines broke. So no contaminants got into them. The reason we had to issue a boil water notice is because the pressure went down so much. And under normal circumstances, normal regulations, when it gets down be uh, below 20 uh, pounds per square inch PSI, uh, you have to do a boil water notice. But again, we had no line breaks and therefore we had still have a closed system. No contaminants got in. Uh, it's a regulatory and precautionary measure, but we're tr trying to live lifted as soon as possible, we will be able to lift it uh, much sooner than later. For the mayor or Dr. Wu, do you as a, authorities in the city have the number of people who died because of freezing weather conditions and who is accounting for these deaths? I, I can take that. That's not um, a usual tracked cause of death. Hypothermia or being dying from being too cold is a subset, but we are going to talk to the medical examiner's office because, yes, there's been interest in the answer to that question. So they are the ones who can track it. So we'll see what we can do.
Firefighters are having trouble accessing water while fighting a fire in an apartment complex on TPC Parkway. Is that due to pipes broken in the area? No, again, SAUCE has not, not had any line breaks um, caused by the weather. So I, I would have to defer to uh, Chief Hood as to what issues he has. Dr. Wu, could we see an increase of COVID cases after this storm, even though measures were followed, many people were gathered in shelters? Uh, it, it's possible. There, there are a lot of variables, and I'm, I try not to predict. We'll just have to see. I'll, I'll add, um, I'm here at our warming station at the convention center right now. All pro COVID protocols are in place. Uh, spacing, masking, sanitation. Uh, in fact, I do want to thank all the volunteers that are here, uh, and there are many folks that are contributing to a, a very well-run operation. Uh, the fire department, EOC, um, police department, uh, food bank, Re American Red Cross, our EOC staff. So everybody is hands on deck, and we've been going over protocol, uh, COVID protocol, for well over a year now. The judge and I have, uh, so they've been doing a good job uh, with that. Can you explain how and why CPS was able to restore power to so many households in the past 24 hours after they had moved so slowly in previous days? And did the frustration from city council yesterday play a role? Um, I think it played a role. Uh, I think uh, frustration from the community played a role. I think frustration from every community in Texas played a role. Uh, I think it's best that CPS directly answer that question, which I think they did uh, in the, their own briefing, and they'll have another one tomorrow. Uh, but uh, there was a clear decision made uh, with regard to ERCOT not requiring those uh, rolling blackouts last night. And I have to think that the, the, um, the, the frustration that people are feeling uh, is finally getting to uh, some action. And so we've seen uh, quite a bit more capacity put onto the grid, uh, supply of energy, um, and credit to all of the members of our community for making um, uh, making that possible by conserving what they have. Uh, and um, you know we're going to continue to work at it. But this is an unacceptable situation. Uh, I'm glad that it's it's starting to improve. Judge Wolf, have you heard from Governor Abbott regarding response to our weather emergency? Well, I haven't talked to the governor, but I did talk to Nim Kidd today, who's in charge of emergency uh, management. I told him that our, our greatest concern is bottled water, whether it gets through the grocery stores or whether it gets to us, that we can share it with people. He was on a call to FEMA just when we started this show, so I don't have the answer to it. Uh, we also met with uh, Congressman Chip Roy, and Congressman Tony Gonzalez, the mayor, and I did over a call, and we again emphasized to them what the shortage is, uh, particularly the water. So hopefully we'll see some help in that area. Mayor Nuremberg, have you heard from Governor Abbott about the weather response? Uh, I haven't, no. And have you heard additional information about FEMA that Judge, other more than what Judge Wolf just mentioned? Um, not directly from FEMA, but we have had uh, several conversations now. In fact, I just got a, a call before this briefing from the White House that reiterated um, some of the things that the judge mentioned about the emergency declaration and FEMA's intent from the reg regional office to help us out. Um, you know, again, our big ask right now is, a, uh, is for water, uh, as the judge mentioned, and, and uh, we've got some initial uh, ask in front of them. Uh, I do know that they are beginning to deliver generators to Texas. Uh, we need some of those down here. For Robert Puente, what changed today that allowed water service to be restored in areas south of Knights Cross and Stone Oak? Uh, basically, power uh, back on uh, was the key to that um, and the ability to move that water. Mayor Nuremberg, I hear 911 lines are overwhelmed with 311 calls. Is the city increasing staffing at 311 to deal with the volume 
and so people don't face discouraging delays or get no answer? Um, I know we have staffed up 311 as a result of our emergency assistance uh, from the COVID uh, crisis. I'll check with our city manager about um, any uh, overwhelming volume on the 311 or the 911 calls, but, uh, but clearly we want to make sure that we've got uh, capacity to handle a, a large volume. I've not heard about any delays at this point, though. And Bruce, if I may, uh, if I may, may, Bruce, you know, we have a numerous customer service representatives at home because of the COVID pandemic. It was, uh, they also, uh, their computers obviously could not function, uh, and so, or uh, internet problems, so they also have problems responding to the constant and the numerous calls that we got from individuals. So that was another reason why we were not able to communicate with our with our customers and try to resolve some of their issues. Dr. Wu, is this weather going to speed the spread of COVID-19? Um, it has the potential because more people are, are gathered indoors. This is kind of the same as the other question, right? Um, but I... It, it has the potential. On the other hand, um, people know the license, and we'll have to wait and see. Were any of the local vaccine uh, supplies compromised because of power outages? I think so. We didn't get in our supply. Uh, we were going to be open Thursday and Friday. We uh, if the weather was okay, but we didn't get our supply in. We also ran into a problem when uh, McAllen had calls up there. They didn't get their supply. We tracked them down, and they were still in Kentucky. Uh, but we will have enough for Saturday to get going. Uh, if, if the question is about the integrity of the vaccines that we have, those were stored with in freezers that had backup generators um, and with thermometers, alarms, if, if um, we move above or below a certain range. So our, we are confident in our vaccine still working. Just a clarification question. Uh, does anyone have knowledge of, of any resident who has died as a result of the weather? Not me. Yeah, I, I mean, you can look at press clippings. I think I, I've seen a couple where that might be the case. So we will be working with the medical examiner to see if we can get that. It's not a traditionally reported category. I have not well, seen the reports. Yeah, go ahead. Will citizens be able to get bottled water tomorrow through the distribution plan? I don't know. Uh, my, my understanding is that. Go ahead, Robert. My, my understanding is, well, if you're talking about bottled water uh, for retail sale, uh, that's obviously a question for our, our retail uh, customers or uh, uh, stores. But the city has a plan in conjunction with SAWS where they are providing a bottle of water. Um, we, on, our, on another plan, are providing water for large containers at some of our sites. Uh, a lot of this is weather dependent because uh, roads are going to ice over again tonight. Uh, and so depending on when they open up, uh, we will be ready to start delivering some of that or have individuals come and able to get some water. Uh, Robert, do you have an estimate on how many days it'll be before the water system is fully back on its feet? Uh, again, that's hard to say um, because of, and, and please understand, a lot of these questions are the need and want for definitive answers and, and times. Um, and, and I want to know, I wanted to know uh, when the power was gonna come on so our pumps could come back on. I wanted to know when uh, my own home was gonna have power. And so I know and understand that people wanna know when will I have water. 
Uh, but it's very hard. It's very difficult to say because uh, when does the thaw start? How many broken lines are we going to have in how many homes? How many individuals are going to be able to have the wherewithal and the knowledge and physically able to get out there and locate their meter, locate where to turn it off, and therefore stop that flow? Those are all questions that uh, we don't have answers to, that time will tell, but we anticipate uh, that we, through forms like this, getting the word out that we have to work together to shut these uh, places, um, these leaks down so that we can build that pressure back up and distribute water to everyone. Mayor, will you now begin doing regular COVID data updates as you were before the weather incident? Yes, we will, um, and we anticipate the data to start processing again uh, for all of our COVID data that we've been tracking uh, today. Uh, so we will have a report out tomorrow as normally scheduled. Uh, but as a reminder, because we're now below the 15% DSHS um, number, the line in the hospitals, uh, we've been there for about a week. We, we do not have uh, weekend COVID updates although we will continue to provide uh, weekend weather updates uh, with re regard to the emergency response uh, to the weather event. That's all we have tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.